بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله أجمعين سيدنا محمدا الصادق سيدنا محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين ورضي الله عن أصحابه وأزواجه وأحبابه والتابعين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I'd like to always start with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then I'll say something that just came to my mind but Allah says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ A portion of an ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us which means say if you do love Allah قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ تُحِبُّونَ means if you love Allah فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يُحْبِبُكُمُ Allah Allah loves you. If you love, follow, he loves. This deen, this faith of ours, deen islam is a deen of love. No love, no deen. In short, the beloved subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out of love to teach love with love for the sake of love. Didn't the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell us in the Sahih hadith fil Bukhari وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى and my worshipper will keep doing extra worship and matters of ibadah until I love him or her. The objective is not the mechanical aspect of worship. The objective is not even worship, even mastering it and perfecting it. But the objective is that you are close to Allah. Wasjud waqtarib, Allah says. Make sujood and get close. And the objective is that you know Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that you love Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The objective is that your heart is close to Allah. It's not that you're doing the worship and your prayers and your fasting and your hajj, but your heart in a di different place. Your body is doing something and your heart is doing something else, but that your body, heart, and soul all, are all with Him, close to Him, in observation of Him, in love of Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, it's Friday. Friday is my emotional day so you I hope you had a blessed Friday it's blessed obviously because it is Friday it's blessed because we're also here at this magnificent uh, occasion here with so many great people and I'd like to also share something that I profoundly feel at this point and moment that I love you all for the sake of Allah. Sure, I have an interest in that because I know the Prophet ﷺ told us in the authentic hadith that seven people will be granted a shade in the day of judgment when no one else is granted shades and ease. Among those seven kinds, there's a kind. They love each other for the sake of Allah. So, with that, I love you all for his sake, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this deen, again, going back to it, 
let's go back to the ayah. Let's see what this ayah is telling us. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ If you love, follow, you'll be loved. Do you see what this deen is? This religion starts with love and ends with love. It was never about the mechanics. Sure, we're supposed to perfect our acts of worship. We're supposed to perfect what we say. We're, we're supposed to perfect what we do. But we were also instructed that once we perfect our deeds, we belittle them and put them behind us. Because it's not the deeds that will get you to the closeness of Allah. It's not the actual deed and the perfection of the deed that will get you to the love of Allah. It's your heart and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will get you there. It is love. And that's why again on this Friday, since I did already say that I love you all and that's a sunnah, I'm gonna ask you a question. How is your heart with Allah today? I'm not talking about actual cardiology. I'm talking about spiritual cardiology. How's your heart with Allah? You've, had, you've just done your Jum'ah prayer. You've had a week. You've had last Ramadan was just there. How's your heart today with Allah? Is it better than last week's? Is it better than last month? Is it better than last year? Are you closer to Allah with your heart than you were yesterday or you're not? Where is your heart? Do you have a heart? Where is it? What is it occupied with? That's the whole point of in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni. If you love Allah, follow me. Oftentimes people mix things. They say you have to follow and then love comes. But you see, Al Quran puts a different priority. Al Quran doesn't say following generates love. Al Quran puts it in a different way. It puts in kuntum tuhibbun. If there is love, that should generate ittiba. And now that you have love and following, that will get you the ultimate, the love of Allah. It's not the other way around. People can follow out of fear, people can follow out of gain. But Islam, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa azwaji wa sallam wanted us to follow out of love. In fact, wanted us to love, then follow. Why do you think? This hadith, let me share with you this hadith that comes to mind. Hadith fil Bukhari and Muslim, both. An Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu qal, uh, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent some of his companions Qibal Najd to the eastern side of Medina and a man fell as a prisoner of war at that time. His name was Sayyidul Yamama. His name is Thumama ibn Uthayl or Uthal. Thumama was taken prisoner so they brought him to the Medina of Sayyidina Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. So a Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes to him and tells him, Mada indaka ya Thumama? Huh? What's with you, O Thumama? Thumama is not Muslim. He was captured in a battle. Thumama looks at him and says, Ya Muhammad, in taqtul taqtulu dha dam, if you kill, if you order them to kill me, you'll kill someone whose blood is very valuable to his people. They'll come after you for revenge. If you show me your grace, I will never forget that favor. If you want money, put down your number, whatever number you want, granted. I'm the chief of my people. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left Umama where? in the prophetic masjid. It says, you stay here. Now he's seeing the Sahaba coming to the prayers, dealing with each other. He's seeing the atmospheres. You think that 
seeing these things, seeing people who, how genuine they are, genuinely kind, genuinely caring about everyone. Even him, he did not believe in Islam. He was actually an enemy combatant, if we were to call this name. And yet he was treated with dignity and respect. And there was love in the air. So he left him like that, fed well, taken care of well. And Nabi ﷺ came next day. He says, ما عندك يا ثمامة? Huh? How about today? What is it with you, Uthman? He didn't tell him anything. He says, what's with you, O Thumama? So what's up? He says, Ya Muhammad, just like I told you yesterday, if you pardon me, you'll give me a favor and a favor I'll never forget. So I'll pay you back. If you kill me, you'll kill someone with the blood that's going to come after you. And if you want money, write down your number. Nabi Wasallam said, left, leave him. So they left him. Another day, also he's interacting, he's seeing everything in front of him. Third day, Nabi Wasallam comes to him, says, what is with you, Ya Thumama? He tells him the same thing. And Nabi Wasallam orders, he says, free Thumama, let him go home. Go home. Go. Go. It's not about killing and it's not about money that the Prophet ﷺ is interested in. Violence is the language of the inarticulate. And the Prophet ﷺ was the most articulate and he came to declare war against violence. If I may use the word war here. It's not about killing you because Islam did not come to take life away from those who don't believe in it. Islam came to give life to all those who believe in it. And those who don't, Islam came to give all hope, growth, and opportunity. Free Thumama. Let Thumama go. We're still in Bukhari and Muslim. He says, Al-Bukhari narrates, he says, Thumama left the masjid, went to a little oasis outside where some palm trees. اغتسل. He washed up and he came back to the masjid. He says, أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He says, Ya Muhammad, no deen on the face of the earth was more hated in my heart to me than your deen. And no deen, no religion on the face of the earth today is more beloved to me than your deen. No face on the face of the earth was more hated to me than your face. And no face is more beloved to me on the face of the earth than your faith, Ya Rasulullah. He says, no city was more hated to me than your city. And no city is more beloved to me than your city. Love changes. That's why Islam worried about the health of the heart rather than, rather than in a spiritual context. Rather than this health of the body, what I mean by the health of the body is the perfection of worship or the rituals with the body. Islam said perfect the rituals, but make sure that your heart is, is healthy. That's why Al Quran Karim goes, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Innaha la ta'mal abusar, walakin ta'mal qulubu lati fi sudur. The visions of the eyes are not blind, but what's blind are the hearts. And woman can fi hadhi a'ma fa huwa fil akhirati a'ma. If you have a blindness of the heart, which means a heart disease, spiritual heart disease. And those of you in medicine, you know, once you have a cardiac disease, once there is a problem, a pathological process in the heart, unfortunately, especially if there is an MI, the condition is chronic and progressive. Allah says, actually, reflecting that in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, fi qulubihim marad, their hearts are diseased. Fazadahum Allahu marada, that this disease becomes more progressive and more chronic. And what happens is at the end of the ayah, you see. لا يشعرون. They lose that sense of feeling, of distinguishing good from bad, wrong from right. That's why Al-Islam focused on how's your heart? And today I'm going to ask you the same question. 
How is your heart with Allah? You and Allah today. How is your heart with Allah today? How is it? Are you close to Allah Ta'ala? When you worship Him, are you close to Him? Are you worshiping Him to be close to Him? Or are you just performing mechanical deeds, mechanics? When you come to the Jummah prayer, do you bring your heart with you or you leave your heart where your shoes are? And you come in with your body. Bring your heart because that's what you need most. That's why Hadith Sahihain, where Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasahbi Wa Aswaji Wa Sallam tells you Hadith Nu'man bin Bashir, you all know the Hadith, young Sahabi, junior Sahabi Nu'man. He says, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam, look at this Hadith. He says, Ala inna fil jasadi mudga. إذا صلحت صلح الجسد كله وإذا فسدت فسد الجسد كله ألا وهي القلب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم is telling us that in the body there is something if it's good everything else becomes good and if it's diseased then no matter how perfect the outside is it's diseased and that is the heart why do you think the most important thing in every deed we do is intention remember the hadith of Sayyidina Umar Remember that hadith? That every deed is hinged on the intention? Where is the intention? Where are intentions? If you were to write an email or to write a letter with the old mail to intentions, Nia, where would you post it to? The heart. Dear Nia, the heart. Your deed is connected by the Nia or hinged on the niyyah, and the intention is in the heart. If your niyyah is good, then that's the beginning of a good deed. But if the niyyah is diseased, if the heart is diseased, then obviously the deed, no matter how good it looks, there's something missing, the transformational act of the deed. That's why today we do worship as rituals. It's not getting us to go to the spiritual. The transformation is lacking because it's mechanics only. The heart is not present. If the heart is present, it'll take you from ritual to spiritual, from information to transformation, to a realization. Take this hadith, hadith for Bukhari also. Hadith on Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, the narrator is Umar radiallahu anhu, Abu Khattab, Abu Hafsa, Amir al Mu'min. He says, a man came, look at this. And again, if you allow me to take you back to the time of Rasulullah to see what love means. A man, his name is Abdullah. They used to nickname him Himar. Regardless, his name is Abdullah. And this, this Sahabi, had a problem drinking, a drinking problem, alcohol drinking problem. So one time they brought him, and again, before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi etc., etc. Al-Hadith Sayyidina Umar says, one of the people said, May you be cursed. How many times, what's wrong with you? You just keep doing the same thing over and over. And Abi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, your beloved, Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa azwaji wa sallam was present. He told them, La tal'anu. How dare you curse him? Fawallahi ma alimtu innahu yuhibbu allaha wa rasoola. By Allah, I know he loves Allah and his Prophet. He loves Allah and his Prophet. Ya Rasulullah, this man is doing, he's an alcoholic drinker, he's doing all these things, and you're vouching for him? And not only vouching, you're saying, Ya he loves, he has love? Yes. You see, if you correct the actions on your limbs and external actions, and the heart is not corrected, it's not gonna work. But if you correct the heart, then the rest of the limbs follow. He's telling them that this man's heart is filled with love. We make mistakes. We're sinners. We're imperfect. Well, we're perfect in being imperfect. That's our perfection. 
He loves Allah and His Prophet. What is He telling us from this hadith? He's telling us that لِلْمَحَبَّةِ شَأْنٍ This mahabba, this love that's in the heart of this Sahabi Abdullah, this love because it's genuine, it will change him. Don't judge him by a mistake that he did. But that love inside will transform him. Take this and count it with the other hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. Also of Sahih, Abu Sa'id al-Bukhari Muslim. You know Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. He says, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to, كان يقسم وقس, he was distributing things. فجاءت, a man came, his name is Dhul Khuwaysara. وهو رجل من بني تميم. Dhul Khuwaysara came to him. And he says, يا رسول الله اعدل. Oh, 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 Messenger of Allah, be just when you distribute between your companions. Now mind you, Rasulullah sallallahu was just in distribution. There's always people who are rude. So Sayyidina Umar anhu was right there. He said, Ya Rasulullah, let me take care of him. You know, Sayyidina Umar anhu was ready. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa told him, Da'hu, leave him. فَإِنَّ لَهُ أَصْحَابًا He will have people like him who follow that path. يَحْقِرُ أَحَدُكُمْ صَلَاتَهُ مَا صَلَاتِهِمْ One of you, Ya Umar, he's not telling me and you. No, no. He's telling people like Umar, Abu Bakr, Uthman, Ali, and these people. You will belittle your prayers if you compare it to theirs. And you will belittle your siyam if you compare it to their siyam. Their prayer and fasting and acts of worship are beyond description. Yours is nothing compared to them. Yet they will exit this deen just like an arrow exits its target. They're not part of this religion per se. The first one, Abdullah, he makes a mistake and Nabi Wasallam says, the love is in his heart. This guy here, his salah is better than all of these people and his siyam is better. But he says he will leave, he will depart this deen. He's not, he will depart this, this, the beauty of this religion. Do you see why the heart is so important? Do you see why love versus following is very important? Not love versus following, but the prioritization of love and following the love if it's genuine it will generate genuine adherence not mechanical adherence it will generate transformation to a realization not just mechanical following and rigid understanding of things it will change you to someone who generates love and genuinely care about the well-being of everyone and everything and everybody that's why when we talk about the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so we talked about, I had to talk about love because we need to know what love is first when we talk about that love. It's not just a word that we say. It's a state that you're in. It's not words that I say, I love you only. And by the way, when I told you I love you, I meant it. So you mean what you say and you say what you mean. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this, in this hadith that he, where he showed us, remember the hadith of the seven people, the seven kinds of people that will be given a shade? Among them is a person. وَرَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسْجِدِ One of the people that will be granted a shade in the Day of Judgment is a person whose heart is attached to the masjid, place of worship. Excuse me? attached to a place of worship? What's a place of worship? Bricks? Yeah. Attached to that? And that helps? If your heart is attached to a place, it helps? And you'll grant, be granted a shade in the Day of Judgment? How about if your heart is attached to people rather than places? Remember Islam, we believe that people are better than places. Remember Hadith Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, Hadith Hassan to say the least, when he looked at the Kaaba. The Kaaba, the holiest place in Mecca, and he said, "Ma akramaki, how honorable you are, O Kaaba of Allah, House of Allah." But a single believer is more honorable than you. You are sacred, but a single person is more sacred than you. 
So if your heart may, is attached to a to the to the to the place which is a place of worship, and uh, and, and this hadith and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us that you'll be granted this ease and comfort in the day of judgment. How about if your heart is not just attached to a place, but is attached to the to people, good people, and not only just good people, the prophets of Allah, but not just any prophet of Allah, the prophet of Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Nabiul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabiul Rahma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look, if you have him in your heart, today we need that love of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to come back to our homes. But in order to come back to our homes and to our families, it has to come back to our hearts first. Our hearts must be blooming and blossoming with love. We can't tell pe other people that Islam is about love and, and, and unconditional compassion if we don't internalize and live them, not just talk about them. We need to internalize that love for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Like the authentic hadith of Bukhari on Urab al-Mas'ud, when his Urab al-Mas'ud sent was sent to negotiate on behalf of the non-Muslims with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he sees how the Sahaba are interacting. He goes back, Urab al-Mas'ud goes back to Quraysh and tell them, "Oh people, I have met the kings of Persia. I have met the kings of Rome. I have been to their courts and palaces, but." I have never seen people love their man like the companions of Muhammad love Muhammad. They're fighting over the remainder of the water of his ablution. Asma fi Sahih Muslim. Asma, the daughter of Sayyidina Abi Bakr, she keeps the jubba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with her. After the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, she put water on it and she gives it as a drink to those who are not feeling well with the barakah and the blessing of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Anas keeps the shoes of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam departed, and he shows them to people he loves. The people, the Sahaba who the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam dis dis distributed their his honorable hair to them, they hold them dear to them. There's that love. Umm Sulaim. The hadith is authentic, Musnad Ahmad and others. Well, hadith aslo fi sahih. She says, when the Prophet ﷺ used to sleep, I would go and take a little bottle. And when he perspires, I take that perspiration and put it in that bottle. Some one time when she was doing it while he's sleeping, she, she takes that time when the Prophet ﷺ is taking a nap and she just goes and takes it. And one time she woke him up by accident. So and Nabi ﷺ says, What are you doing? Oh Umm Sulaim. Well hadith fi Muslim Ahmad was not Sahih, huh? It's not the hadith that's not Sahih. No, no, the hadith is Sahih. But the Iman is daif. The Iman is weak. And that's where we need to go back to the Iman. She says, what, he says, what are you doing, O oh, Umm Sulaim? She says, Ya Rasulallah, Araquka adufu bihi tibi. O oh, Prophet of Allah, your honorable perspiration, it perfumes the concentrated perfume that I have. So she has that perfume and she perfumes her perfume with the perspiration of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If everything had to do with him was elevated. Look at Mecca, the city of his birth, became Mecca al mukarrama Look at al Madina, the city of his residence and rest, became al Madina tul Munawwara, the illuminated. Look at the book that Allah gave him, became Quran Kareem. Look at the Ummah that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has. Kuntum khayra umma. Look at the Sahaba, the best of Sahaba. Look at the family, the best of family. Anything, even the shoes of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud used to carry them. And they used to be called, nicknamed Hamilun Na'lain, the carrier of the shoes. Anything that had to do with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is elevated. Where is your heart? Is it attached to him? Because if your heart is attached to him, it will be elevated as well. Today, we have, we take people and attach them to too many different things. Yeah, attachment to Sayyidina Rasulullah helps. You need his love in your life. 
You need His love in your home. So we can be transformed by our faith, not just doing mechanics of the faith, not just doing the rituals of the faith. Because what was his mission? What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What was the mission statement, if we can say so, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Ya Rasulullah, the meaning of the ayah, we sent you but as unconditional compassion to the creation, to the worlds. By default, then we ought to be the extension of this unconditional compassion. Ask yourself, are you, is your compassion unconditional to everyone and everything? Or do you have conditions unto whom you grant your compassion? If you do, you're not following the path of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammadun Rasulullah, because it was the unconditional compassion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him with. We need that love. Because ittiba following and mechanics without love preceding it is not going to be right. It's not going to generate results. It's not going to generate transformation. It's just going to make us amass information. And today, guess what? We're oversaturated by information. Oversaturation of information. Right, wrong, and everything in between. But there is little transformation. Today the world expects love from the followers of Muhammad and Rasulullah Sallallahu They expect unconditional compassion. But you know what? Forget about the world. You for your own spiritual health, you need that love. You need that compassion for your faith to be complete. Remember the hadith in Bukhari? All, all of you know the hadith. يقول فيه سيدنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وأزواجه وأصحابه وسلم لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ولده ووالده والناس أجمعين. Right? The Hadith Al Bukhari actually himself narrated in different different wordings in his Sahih. But let me take this short one. I don't want to take too much of your time. The Hadith means one of you would not be a believer, meaning a complete believer, until I am more beloved to him than his. Waladihi, his son or his children, Wawalidihi and his parents, Wanasi Ajmain. Have you ever thought about this hadith? Have you ever thought what does that mean? Because today even love, we made it theoretical. What does that mean? Oh yeah, sure, I love you. Yeah, really? So when it comes to the Prophet وسلم, Everybody loves him, sure. We love him, of course we do. But look at the Prophet Sallallahu accuracy in the hadith. He's telling you, you would not be a complete believer until you love him more than you love your children and more than you love your parents and more than you love all people. Now, how, how do you love your children? Do you say, all right, let me, let me put this argument, theoretical, theological argument. Since I have to love him to be a complete believer, all right, I already love him. Done? Okay, great. How, do you love your child? by saying, okay, you know what, son? I love you because you're my DNA, so you know, I gotta love you, so I love you. Is that how you love your child? Or does your heart go out to your children? It's not just theoretical, theological argument. It's not a theological, theoretical love. It's not just a logical argument that you come, in, come with. It's not a mathematical equation. It's a spiritual state. Do you really love him like you love your child? Your heart goes out to him. Why do you think he وسلم, told us that the miser is the one that hears my name but does not basically, the meaning of the hadith, though that's not verbatim, the verbatim, فلم يصلي عليه. But then the meaning is, it does not move his heart to remember me and send his love and salam to me. Sallallahu alayka ya Sayyidi ya Rasulullah. How's your heart with Allah? Is it getting better or is it still the same? Are you closer to Allah than you were at the beginning or you're not? Check your heart. How's that EKG doing? Spiritual EKG. Okay. QRST segment. 
How's that going? How do you love your child? Then he says, وَوَالِدِهِ So your love to your children is, is one kind of love. Then you have another love to your parents. You love them differently, don't you? You love your children, those of you who have children, those of you who want children, Allah grant your children. Obviously everybody here has parents. If they've passed away, may Allah have mercy on them, shower them with His unconditional forgiveness and mercy. You love your parents differently than you love your children, but you love them. Then you love different people. You love your spouse, you love your neighbor, you love different people differently. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is trying to tell you in this hadith, you would not be a complete believer until his love Sallallahu Alaihi wa wa Sahbi wa Zwaji wa Sallam is more than your love to your children, more than your love to your parents, more than your love to all kinds of people. In other words, every single one in the magnitude and in the obviously the, 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 the track. So the way you love them and how much you love them. The way you love this category and how much. And the way you love other categories and how much. But then the sum of all of them together, all of them in different categories and the magnitudes of all, loving all these different people, the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ought to be more. That's when you taste Iman. Remember the hadith? Zaqa. Iman. Remember the hadith? You'll taste, you'll actually taste the sweetness of Iman. Have you tasted? Or we're still talking about the ingredients of what's in a pizza and you're memorizing the ingredients, but you've never tasted the pizza. You know what a pizza is made of. You know what needs to happen to make the pizza correct but you've never tasted. But this faith is about realization. And realization means what? Experience, tasting. You come with your heart. You don't leave your heart behind. He tells you this so that you don't say, I love Rasulullah and I just love him, it's okay. It's just something in my mind, I'm done. But so that you what? So your heart speaks before your tongue. Remember the story, this has, doesn't have an authentic sanad, so take it or leave it. But Al-Qurtubi narrates it in his tafsir, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Thawban. Thawban was one of the people who Allah honored him by serving Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Send, send your salah and salam to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whenever you hear his name. It will rejuvenate your heart. It's sort of like the spiritual CPR. Thawban, Sahabi, I mean, you know, number one is a Sahabi. Not only a Sahabi, he was honored to be uh, among the people who served the best of the creation, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, mind you, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was surrounding, surrounded by Jibreel, the, 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 uh, the angels were there. I mean, and this guy, this, this, this Sahabi is also serving him. You know, so Thawban is Thawban. And Thawban, the Qurtubi says, one time a Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw him frail. Frail, yellowish, pale. He says, what's with you allegedly? I say allegedly because the hadith is not authentically uh, based. So he says, allegedly, what is with you, O Thawban? Malak, ya Thawban, what is with you? Why are you so pale and frail? Is there something wrong with you? Look at Thawban. He says, Ya Rasulullah, ma bi min illa. I don't, there's nothing wrong with me. Except that when I leave you, when I'm not with you, present with you, and I go back to my family and children, I have such a love and yearning, shok. I have such a yearning towards you that I cannot sit still until I come and behold your honorable face one more time and take a glance at you and see you. So when I am far away, I can't, that love does not make me sit still. It's in my heart. He says, but then, then Thauban starts crying in this narr narrative. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam allegedly tells him, but Ya Thauban, you are with me now. You're here. You are in the 
prophetic atmosphere. You are in the Muhammadan environment. You are overwhelmed by the Muhammadan mercy. You are covered and showered by the Muhammadan love. What is with you, Ya Thaban? This is not a place where someone cries. He tells him, Ya Rasulullah, I am not concerned about the dunya for as long as I live. I can always come and be with you. But I am worried about the akhirah in Jannah. If I do make it in Jannah in heavens, but then I am Thawban and you are Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will be in a much higher level in paradise. And then what do I do there? I can't make it to come and see you. I'll be missing you. So I'm, he's crying because he can't get to see the Prophet Sallallahu in Jannah eventually when he gets to Jannah. He's not worried about Jannah now in any other perspective like we turn it today into a dunya thing almost, right? He's worried in Jannah, Ya Rasulullah, but my loving, I can't get to see you and that makes him cry. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then tells him, the, allegedly in this uh, narrative, narrative tells him that, well, you will be with the Siddiqeen and Nabiyyin, Siddiqeen, Shada, Salihin, if you are with them, if you love them, you'll be with them. You know Hadith Anas fi Sahih Muslim, where a Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a man comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asks him, he says, Ya Rasulullah, Mata Sa'a? Look at this, Hadith al Sahih. When is the day of judgment? Because today we also ask all these, you know, sometimes irrelevant questions that have nothing to do with our own in our own perfection and our own development spiritually and others. He says, when is the day of judgment? Right? Like we do, when is the, all these things. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, وَمَا What have you prepared for it? If the day of judgment was to happen tomorrow, what have you prepared for it? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I have not prepared much. The man is honest. He tells him, look, I basically do my fara'id, basically. The fard I basically do, that's it. I have not done much. Except that I love Allah and His Prophet. It's not just a word I say. I love Him. I love you, Ya Rasulullah. I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what the Prophet tells him? Anta ma'man ahbabt. You will be assembled with those you love. Who do you love today? Who do you love? Love that generates, true love generates emulation, generates following, generates closeness, generates thoughts and trying to be like that, generates the vision the same that you are a, you have a message that comes with unconditional compassion to everyone. Our faith, my dear beloved brothers and sisters, is not complete without love. Let no one else, let no one tells you, tell you otherwise. Mechanics is not gonna get it. Mechanics are important, but you, once you perfect your deed, you put it behind you. Isn't that the, the premise? You're supposed to do prayers, but Allah does not need our prayers. Prayers help you to propel you to be close to Him now. He doesn't need your prayers and, and your fasting and your charity and what you do. Prayers will make you closer to Him, will make you more beloved to Him. It will propel you to that if you open your heart. But you need to bring your heart with you to the prayer. And you need to bring your heart with you when it comes to Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So his name is just not like any other name, but the name goes into your ears, to the ears of your heart. And it changes you. You feel the feelings of yearning and the feelings of love and the feelings of appreciation and deep gratitude and waiting to see him. And if you can't, you can't wait to see him, you send him your love and salams and greetings now. Every time you say, Assalamu Alaikum Ya Rasulullah, he sends his salam back to you. That's the connection that you have with him. Maybe you'll also see him in your dream, not just in your heart when you love him. In summary, the beloved subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out of love because Allah is wadud. 
to teach love, which is this religion, with love, for the sake of love, hatta uhibba. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.